good evening. I would like to talk this evening about a, an important principle in astrology which is not really given much consideration or exposition in, in astrological texts. It's kind of stated that this is the significator of this or this is the significator of that without really uh, bringing any uh, detail or explanation of, of the principle of signification and the different types of signification. Um, essentially, um, signification is what becomes significant in, in the mind of the astrologer. And more than that, uh, it's a focal point through which we can then narrow our attention through the symbol to see what it is supposed to signify. Uh, in other words, a speculative sig uh, significator. And then to see if that actually becomes what is called or what Jeffrey Cornelius has called a radical significator. Now, um, the difference between a speculative significator and a radical significator is a very important um, element in astrology because if things remain speculative then all the things that we say about an astrological chart at the beginning are merely speculations of our own mind upon certain uh, symbolic uh, associations so for example Let's take um, a planet in the third house. In traditional astrology, the third house would represent one's brothers or sisters. Uh, there are all kinds of delineations about what, who the first brother is or the second brother, the brother from the brother and so on. But I just want to keep this um, uh, uh, simple for the time being. In, in horary astrology, um, it is the ruler or the sign uh, on the cusp of the third and the sign, the planet which rules that sign would said to be the primary significator of a brother or a sister. And I'm just concentrating on this for the, for the moment because this is traditional astrology and uh, it shows us the, uh, the, the mental formulations or the mental steps that an astrologer will go through in order to delineate something practical or useful uh, from a horoscope. So if we see, let's say, Venus in the third house, uh, we, our mind starts to plug into the idea of Venus and this how somehow being um, uh, a shed upon all of those things of the third house. In other words, the planet in a house will be will shed its influence throughout all of those things connected to the third stuff to do with education and mental formulations and concepts and of course the derivation I suppose of siblings through the uh, natural ruler of the third house which may which is uh, Gemini and Mercury representing those affiliations um, which are connected to you um, via blood in other words there's the the sibling idea the twin idea those uh, parts of us which are I interrelated to us in a quite natural uh, manner so if Venus is in the third house, uh, we might start up a description of a, a, a sister or a, a, a brother, a brother that may be somehow connected to Venusian pursuits, such as perhaps an artistic pursuit to, to, to be simple or a, a, a poetic frame of mind or someone involved in an, an aesthetic quality. Often Venus represents people that um, are interested in beauty, beauty dynamics, uh, beauticians, um, uh, 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 people that uh, are involved in, in, in apparel or clothing, sometimes painters, decorators, in a, in a very ordinary sense, the person who beautifies something may be related to pictures or art in some way and often through its association with Libra, the, um, the sign of harmony and balance through, through to music or verse. And so there's a very cultured sense of Venus here with the, with the Libra idea of social dynamics and grace and involvement with other people, a kind of social grace that, that has, a, has a very collegiate sense about it, a very cultured, uh, mannered, uh, often a, a person with a, a refined taste, uh, depending on um, uh, other things in the horoscope. 
the Venusian type of Venus is a, a person more interested in the, the earthy realm, the pleasure realm, They're more more linked to the percussive instruments of the orchestra, those which create a strong vibration. If Venus was in an air sign, we might see flutes or we might see something of that nature. Reed instruments uh, are particularly um, uh, related to um, uh, air signs. If it was fire signs, it's something to do with flashy instruments or peculiar sounds. If it's um, uh, water signs, then we have this very, very emotive sense that the type of musician is trying to produce a mood. So tone, uh, uh, either on the piano or something, is very important because the, the musical instrument is used to portray the feeling life rather than the intellectual life of a person, the, the, the um, air signs. So we would say there's something Venusian about the brother. This could be further refined through the sign. So the brother might have uh, red hair, or he might be of, a, of, a, of, a, of a, 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 an argumentative type, or we would start to describe something around the brother, perhaps a, a military name, because uh, Aries, let's say it was in Aries, this, this uh, suggests a kind of um, a thrusting forward, a, a kind of self-promotion of the personality, a person that can't be bothered to sit still very much, um, or, or e easily bored, it's kind of thrust its um, qualities out uh, very rapidly. Um, this is uh, perhaps the, the Marilyn Monroe syndrome we had. It just comes to me, Venus in Aries, who thrusts her kind of beauty and her natural um, sexuality uh, forward in, in order to say, well, what do you think of me? You know, it's not a Leonine, what do you think of me? It's just the impact of something that the, the Aries, um, uh, the Aries has, a, has a natural inclination towards making things happen. It has to be incisive. It has to have a, um, a, an effect on the material world or the emotional world of others. If it doesn't have that effect, it doesn't know it's alive. It's the principle of the sign to get things moving, to have a kind of incisive point of view or something. So when Venus is using that sign, the emotionality, the relationship, the, um, the, the desired relationship or the, the pleasure is instantaneous and it, it needs to be expressed in a rather penetrative manner. It can be quite vocal at times, but uh, sometimes with Venus there is a need for eloquence. So there could be a sharp wit to the personality or a particular style of music, which is very Martian, quick, rapid. Um, the person may have a, a, a very powerful technique which, which pushes itself forward into the, into the ears of people and then it makes an impact, as I say, in that very martial Aryan way. Now, um, if, if the description of that Venus in Aries seems to concretely materialize in the outer person of another person's brother or sister, and you can start to describe it, there's a peculiar thing which um, starts to happen in, a, in, in an astrology reading. And I often do this, uh, try and demonstrate this in my classes on horary astrology. And we use the natal chart, let's say, to describe a person's um, uh, pets at home by looking at the sixth house. Or I used to do a thing where I would look and just try and uh, move through the symbol to see what came uh, on the, the, the cusp of the fourth, which is the parental home, or the, the type of door or street, or the number perhaps even one can speculate on. These are all speculative thought, um, uh, imaginative exercises that one can do as an astrologer, because it exercises the imagination through the symbolism. Uh, or, or perhaps, um, you know, if Jupiter is in the fourth house, uh, you know, maybe you lived near a church or perhaps on a hill with a with, with, a, with a broad view. If, um, if Saturn is in there, uh, perhaps one was born into a difficult circumstance in some way. These are very old astrological ideas and Saturn in the fourth in a 
in a um, in a in in any sense, whether you're born into money or poverty or not, it is is a sense that one's life at home was rather constricted. It was rather dour, and um, uh, rather plagued by things, or a, a dark cloud somehow around in the atmosphere, restricting your movement, restricting the idea that, that you could you could move out. Maybe there's some parental authority in the home and so on. So this is how we start to build up interpretations. You use the symbol and the house placement and the sign placement. But all that is very speculative. But there comes a time in an astrology in astrology reading where one is describing something like this when the uh, description turns into a lived experience from the client that the astrological symbol begins to gain a, um, a, a foothold in the real lived experience of a person. For example, let's say just a, an odd example that comes to mind a few years ago, I remember Venus in Libra in, uh, in uh, the third house. And uh, I started to describe this and then suddenly saw a, a ballerina and uh, the person was an art critic and liked ballet. And so there was this sense of writing about what they found beautiful in life. I think the Librum quality is, uh, has, a, has a lot to do with dancing, its grace, its movement, but particularly classical elements. Um, now, what happens is when the symbol of the horoscope there and this significator turns into an actual uh, lived experience for the person, the description the astrologer brings to an astrological placement starts to turn into a real component. There is an identification of astrological symbol with something real. Um, now, if we're talking in terms of personality, we're talking in terms of a kind of personality placement, a, an arena of life experience, which this Venus will tend to uh, show in, 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 in relation to the symbolism of the house placement and the sign. Uh, but it can show in particular areas at any particular time. So the, uh, it turns into, from speculative, it becomes radical. And radical means real, and we know we're onto something when that real dimension, when that um, actualization occurs, and then something in the mind changes even further, because we know we've hit a point of uh, actual connection. So the symbol has mediated the imaginal world, and, 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 and eventually it forms into a real content as such in the person's life and it's from there that we know that we can rely on that astrological placement for uh, a, 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 any future considerations and so it becomes more and more real more and more articulate within the reading base or within that particular uh, 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 mode of apprehension that the that the one gets in when a client is sitting in front of you this is what I was talking about in earlier videos about how the a client can somehow, um, the presence of the client, whether it's through Skype or whether it's um, uh, in person, somehow does um, affect through the counter-transference what the astrologer says and does. So that's the movement anyway from um, a speculative significator into something real and tangible uh, from the symbol. So it's moved from an, as, uh, an image on a page through the conventions of astrology into a symbol. And a symbol refers to lots of different things, multi-level analysis. I was looking at a very uh, uh, um, uh, um, a real circumstance if it describes an actual person in, in this instance. That's a description of an astrological placement at the material level. We could equally apply this to the uh, social level, what, what the person might do in society, the psychological level as a, uh, a character placement, and at a transpersonal level, what that means at a, at a kind of high level of understanding and flowing. It means that Venus moves, you're, you're kind of destined to move through that placement. I mean, in that dimension, I, I bring in Dane Raja, who talks about the houses as your celestial instructions. It's like there's a, 
a, um, a, a channel or a pathway through which you will meet that planetary God within the Templum of the Houses, uh, a, a form of uh, you being a, a, a vehicle through which Venus, through which v you and your third house dynamics, your, your vocabulary and your, your mental agility and your early learning and so on. Maybe there will be, as I say, a love of music or a deep love of books or something to do with poetry or along that line of the Venusian connections which, um, or which affects you deeply and you will give form to. So we move then from image to astrological symbol, then it becomes a significator or a radical significator. And then the actual placement has become real. It has become a, a, a vitalized uh, symbol within the astrological chart, which can be used to um, not just speculate about things, but it can be used to navigate your, or your way around the, the actual dimensions of a person's lived experience. Anyway, look, I hope that that um, uh, general idea about speculators has been, um, has been explained. I'm going to go on in further details to explore the nature of signification and, and how to work with it in, in astrological practice.